An important thing to know about Mammal Day is that it's really built on the foundation of its people and its partnerships. The Rosemary Williams program began in 2003 when there was a noted uh, area um, of disparity in health for women with breast uh, disease and breast cancer. The program was developed to serve women who are under-resourced, underinsured uh, in the Washington DC area. This program is extremely important in that breast cancer caught in the early stages is very likely a very curable disease nowadays. Um, many of these women are either uninsured or underinsured and wouldn't have the opportunity otherwise to get a mammogram. Mrs. Williams was just phenomenal at being open to the community and I think that's kind of the spirit of Mammal Day. That from the beginning it was really built on partnerships with local organizations that reached out to communities that were often very underserved lacked resources and also had cultural barriers such as language and just general cultural issues that would keep them from accessing care. Me gusta siempre venir acá. Y quisiera pues que también todas las mujeres se integraran a a este programa que es bien interesante para nuestra salud y para el bienestar de nuestras familias. Bueno, doy gracias porque hasta este momento, pues, el chequeo anual de mi mamografía en, en el hospital, en la universidad, eh, es gratis. Eh, pues nos reciben con amabilidad, nos tienen un rico desayuno y estoy satisfecha con, con este programa. Yo invito a todas las mujeres a que se integren que prevengan el llanto de sus familias mañana. So by reaching out to those community partners, we were able to open our doors much more broadly to the community. And now, you know, at this point, those partnerships have been in place for over a decade or more, and they're really strong foundations of the program. We have been working with the Howard University Cancer Center almost 10 years now, and we assist them during their MAMO days by serving breakfast to all of their clients. And really, um, when we first started out, we walked through the building and it was just kind of quiet and it just so somber. And we're like, how can we bring a little bit of life um, while people were waiting to get their mammogram? And we started off with just bringing a continental breakfast, then we added music, then we added a diverse, diversity of music because there's a diversity of people that come in for their mammograms. Yeah. I've been coming to this program for about four years now. It has been a great help because at the present moment, I am uninsured. The program has been really nice. Um, the experience has been really great. Um, everyone has been very helpful in showing and leading and guiding. The, the doctors have been nice. Um, overall, it's been a great experience. Volunteers give it their time um, each Saturday that we have the program to come in very early and make sure that our communities are served. Um, they help with anything from interpreting forms, translating, helping people to just feel comfortable, explaining the process, escorting. And so there's so much that goes into this process and we couldn't do it without the devotion of our faculty, our staff, our students, and all of our wonderful volunteers. We thank you so much for your support because the Mammal Day program helps so many women and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. My name is Nicole Thompson. I am a genetic counselor at the Howard University Cancer Center. I lead the Hereditary Cancer Genetics Program and the Equal Access to Genetic Testing Fund. Um, the Hereditary Cancer Genetics Program started in 2013 when we learned that over 50% of our patients with breast cancer actually needed genetic counseling and genetic testing services but didn't receive it at that time. So we created the clinic where we've seen um, over 500 encounters to date. Um, through that clinic, we found that several patients either did not have insurance or were underinsured. And through that, we were able to develop the Equal Access to Genetic Testing Fund, which helps to cover the costs for genetic counseling for patients that don't have insurance or whose insurance providers don't cover the service. 
The Cancer Genetic Counseling Program is dedicated to providing genetic counseling and genetic testing for any patient showing signs that they might have a hereditary cancer syndrome. Advances in cancer treatment have skyrocketed, where it is now possible to tailor a patient's treatment to their specific genetic makeup. Well, the decision that I made was to just let everything go. Because at this girl's age, she didn't need it anymore anyway. So, but I, I, I felt really good about that. So it was like, that's one less worry that I have. You need to know. You need to know that the risk that you're facing, you need to know. Because everything right now, it's in the genes. It's in the genes. And once you're tested, you will know and you can make the right decision. My name is Kimberly Higginbotham. I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor. I was first diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 23, and I was treated here at Howard University Hospital. When I was diagnosed, I had to go to the different specialty of doctors to find out what my next steps were, what my treatment options were. Again, in 2015, I got a second diagnosis of breast cancer, but this time I was able to use the transdisciplinary clinic. And it was really a blessing to have that in place because my family was able to sit at the table with me and the doctors. They were able to hear the answers to my questions and then they were able to ask their questions as well. The transdisciplinary breast clinic has been really a godsend for us. It has given us the opportunity to come together as a group um, of experts, providing a perspective and a overall treatment plan for our patients, and then taking that to our patients, their families, their caretakers, and have them understand the entire picture. It really, I think, helped them um, process a little more. They were still scared about the diagnosis, but just being able to speak directly to the doctor and not get secondhand information or forgetting, oh, I wish I had asked that, and well, what about this? It was, able, it was all out there in front of everyone. I was um, diagnosed in 2015, and Dr. Lori Wilson was uh, my surgeon and not only is, is she a surgeon, but I consider her a, a, a friend and like a family member. Um, this, um, this program here at Howard inspires cooperation and inspires just a feeling of community and family. And so I'm proud to be um, one of the patients here from Howard University. And I thank God for the wonderful care that I feel and the attention that I feel like I'm getting as a patient. I'd like to thank the supporters. I'd like to thank all of those that have donated to uh, the Transdisciplinary Breast Clinic and to know that you've made a significant difference in the lives of our patients and the ability for us to provide the best possible expert care on the forefront of cancer care uh, in the Washington, D.C., Virginia metropolitan area. Thanks so much.